God wants you to prosper, not somebody else, not someone down the street, but he wants you to prosper. He promises to be our exceeding great reward. God has a great plan for you. Third John, verse two, it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Well, hello again. I'm Dr. Shante Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, and it is my pleasure again to be able to serve you today. Let's go ahead and bow and ask God to just intervene in this situation. Father, we thank you. God, we bless and we honor you for all that you have done, all that you continue to do, all that you will do in the future. Thank you, Lord, for just loving us and watching over us and giving us examples. Thank you, God, for our fathers. Thank you, God, for everyone that is listening to the sound of my voice. God, I bless you for them and I ask that you cover and keep them. It's in Jesus' name that I do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, it is truly my pleasure today to come before you, and I wanted to talk today. This is the month of June, and I want to honor fathers, and in many instances, we talk about fathers all the time, or we talk about men all the time, but I'm going to look specifically at one father today, and that father is Eli, and you know Eli was a priest. However, there were some things that we can glean from his leading and his guiding, because today I want to talk about how you should lead, how you should lead. See, we find um, Eli in many passages of the scripture, but I wanted to specifically go to where he's dealing with his sons, Hophni and Phineas. Uh, Hophni, not a very easy name or and Finney is not another one either that we normally hear today, but we find them in 1 Samuel chapter number two. And it starts in the 12th through the 17th verses where we find out that they are disrespecting what God had already put in place as far as offerings and sacrifices. They were taking the choicest piece of meat as opposed to allowing those that are bringing their sacrifices before the Lord to give God the best piece and then the priest taking that next. They would even force it in some instances, forcing the Israelites who are bringing their sacrifices to sin. They were doing evil in the sight of the Lord. We see them again in the 22nd through the 25th verses where they're then taking advantage of the women the prostitutes, or they were prostituting them and utilizing them for their own services. They were doing evil in the sight of the Lord. And then Eli says something to them, and I'm going to say it here, and then we're going to come back again. In verse 25, it says that he asked the question, if a man, or he makes a statement first, if a man goes up against another man, then God can intercede. But if a man goes up against the Lord, who can intercede for him? That's a question to ponder. We're going to come back there. But Eli tries to then correct them in verse 25, and they would not listen to him. We continue on from 27 to 34, when God then is going to openly rebuke and tell Eli, that his family is not going to live to be old age any longer, that he had placed the priesthood on them, that he was taking that priesthood back because he was allowing his sons to do this evil thing. And he says, you've honored your sons more than you've honored me. And that's going to be a problem. And I am not going to continue to allow this to happen. Both your sons are going to die in the same day. So he gives him the edict of what's going to happen. Now, we know as we continue to read that particular story in 1 Samuel chapter number three, verses 16 through 18, there was a fight in, in the beginning of the third chapter. And in that battle, both of Eli's sons died the same day. And when Eli hears about it in verse 18, he falls over from his chair, breaks his neck, and he dies. And so therefore the proclamation that God had placed comes to pass. 
Well, there's a lot that we can learn from this, whether you are a man or whether you're the head of household, if you're female or what have you, we can all learn from this as parents. And one of the things that we learn, fathers, we need you to take your significant place in our lives. We need you to lead. How you lead is so important to us. Whether you're leading the church as a pastor, and I don't want us to disrespect, but I do want to identify the fact here that even in any organization or any institution that is created by man, there are going to be those that are stepping outside of the will of God and doing evil in the sight, in his sight. But then there's that remnant that is still doing what is right. So I don't want you to then step back and say, oh, because everybody else is doing it and they're wrong, that that is something that you should follow. We should want to make sure that we're doing all is unto the Lord because God is going to honor what we do. So we see it in many instances. Let's honor those who are doing what God has called them to do and leading appropriately. So let's get some takeaways here. One, men, we need you to take your rightful place. We, those that are following you, are watching. We need you to lead by example. We need you to show us from a spiritual standpoint where you stand. We don't need you to honor us more than you honor God. We need you to have the right priorities in place. In addition to that, we also need you to show respect for the things of God because that then demonstrates to us even more. It's not just the example, it's the demonstration that we're also looking for. We, in addition, need you to correct and rebuke as appropriate when necessary, even if we are not listening. Because sometimes if you notice in the passage, they didn't listen to their father. He was telling them right, but maybe it had gone on for so long that there was no more respect for him but that doesn't mean that he was not supposed to take his rightful authority and correct and rebuke and chastise when necessary. We need you to honor God above everything, including ourselves, recognizing that if you follow what God's word says, he says, I am, this is in verse 30, I will honor those who honor me, but those who despise me will be disgraced. We don't want you to be disgraced. We want you to be honored. And then we will then in turn honor you. Ultimately, we all end up answering to God. And so I'm gonna take you back to that question that just sticks out in the midst of all of this. One, God is so good. He loves us with an everlasting love. He promises us so much that's in the Bible and we can stand on those promises there. Yes, and they are amen. And if you look back over your life, you'll see that God has intervened in so many different areas in so many different ways. And even if you didn't have a great father, he has been a father to the fatherless and he has done the things that he needs to do for you. And he's done so much more. If you did not have a father, God is your example. And if you're trying to father others, look to him as your example and demonstrate it to them as well. But let me go back to that question. We are supposed to be in relationship with one another and that's ideal, that's God's design. We're not created to just be on an island by ourselves, but we're designed to be in relationship. And he says, he asked the question, if a man goes up against another man, then God can intervene. We need to allow God to fight some of our battles. We need to allow God to intervene into our situations. We need to pray and ask him for that divine intervention as well as that spiritual revelation so that we'll have the right strategies, those spiritual strategies to get things done appropriately. Stop fighting and let God fight your battles. But in the midst of all that, he also says another thing. He says, if you go up against the Lord, if a man goes up against the Lord, who can intercede for him? Now we know Jesus interceded on our behalf, but if we are still going to do the one-two punch and go up against God, can a man box with God? Our arms are too short to do that. 
we should know because he's the divine creator of everything. We can't fight with him. And that's not our place. Are we to follow blindly? No, we're supposed to know the word. The word should come out of our mouths. We should lead appropriately. So that is what I am going to give you today. Lead. How are we leading? L, we let God fight. We let him do the fighting. E, examples are required. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be the examples for others. A, accountability is essential. Call us on the carpet if we're out. Call someone else on the carpet if they're out. Tell them that they are held accountable for what they're supposed to do if you're going to be an excellent leader. And D, do all as unto the Lord. So when we honor God first, we put everything in place. We make others held, hold accountable to what they're doing. We're the examples. Follow me as I follow Christ. And we let God fight our battles. L-E-A-D, we lead. That's how we're supposed to do it. So you know what? God does not leave us without an example. And when we look at Jesus's life, everything that he did was according to what God will have him to do. And yes, he was God all while he was here on this earth, but he operated as a man empowered by the Holy Spirit. He was our example. He's our ultimate example. I am so thankful that he has allowed us the opportunity to look into his word, stand on his promises, recognize his principles and follow them just as he did while he was here on this earth. Now, does that mean that you're gonna be perfect? No, nope. but it does mean that you're striving for perfection because he says that he that has begun a good work in you is more than able to perform it. He can't complete it. So if you messed up in the past, just get it right today and start moving forward. And then the authority will come back. The respect will come back. And as you lead, lead by example. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for your sacrifice and your service to our country, to our families, to our churches, to the leadership that we are looking for. It's been my pleasure. Let's bow. Father, thank you for each and every person who is listening to the sound of my voice today. Those that are in leadership positions in the home, those that are in leadership positions on their jobs and their businesses, those that are in leadership positions in the church, those that are in leadership positions even in the fight for our country. Lord, we thank you for them and we ask that you cover and keep them. Keep guiding them according to your rules, O oh Lord, because you said that there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction and death. And we don't want that. Keep us on the narrow path so that we might be the best examples that we could truly lead according to the way you would have for us to do letting you fight our battles, turning it all over to you, being the examples before others so that they would have something to follow. Holding them accountable is necessary so that we can correct and get them back in line. And then Lord, doing all is unto you. Well, thank you in advance for all that you're gonna do on our behalf. Thank you for our past that you've already brought us through. Thank you for the multitude of miracles that continue to follow us. We'll give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, I'm Dr. Shante Haynes, and it truly has been my pleasure to expound on God's word with you today. Continue to put feet to your faith and walk victoriously. You can find us online at h, the number two, htruth.org. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.